this particular project with, with Matsant has been amazing collaboration between conservation-minded people working with BHA and, and OHA and, and the Oregon Zoo. Just opened up a, a great group of conservation-minded people. Yes, we're looking at a bull that we spotted over there. It's got huge fists. Looks like a big six by six. Uh, I want to get a closer look, but the challenge is that there's about 200 elk between him and us. Uh, there's bulls, 10 bulls plus on each of the ridge lines. Um, definitely have never hunted a place quite like this. It's pretty awesome. It really hasn't been until these last couple years where researchers have begun to really understand exactly where and how far these animals are going. It's not just about summer range and winter range. These animals aren't just traveling, beelining in a straight line. It's about the habitat that's in between. The Zumwalt Preserve here is one of the largest intact native bunchgrass prairies left in the lower 48. TNC just owns a small portion of that larger landscape. So it's a, it's a really unique area. Uh, it's, a, it's a high plateau with um, mountains to the south and, and Hell's Canyon surrounding it on the other side. This is one of my favorite parts of the state. I'm you know, born and raised Oregonian and uh, been coming up to the northeastern part of the state for a number of years now, hunting more kind of over in the Wallowas area, Hell's Canyon. Been up to the, the Nature Conservancy one other time, and uh, it's just, it's unbelievable property. It is the most scenic, probably one of the most scenic places in the entire state, and the amount of wildlife on this property is just incredible. If you stand in the middle of Zumwalt Prairie and you look over your shoulder to the east, you see the just iconic landscape of, of Hell's Canyon. And you turn around and you look to the southwest and you see the Eagle Cap Wilderness. BHA's Oregon chapter, our work doesn't begin and end at the boundary lines of those wildernesses, those core habitats for big game. So it creates an interesting dynamic where, where you have this large landscape that's mostly privately owned that butts up against some some huge expanses of public ground. Stretching seven miles on the Zumwalt Preserve's remote eastern boundary, Long Ridge is ideal late season elk habitat. Flat on top, then dropping steeply off the eastern slope, are a number of large finger ridges. We had barely started glassing when we began spotting groups of elk scattered throughout the timber pockets and open grassy hillsides. Hey, this is Matt Snyder, uh, out here on the first morning of my 2018 Zumwalt Prairie elk hunt. I uh, once hunt in a raffle. Zumwalt Prairie has a, a raffle system for four elk tags that they raffle off every year. I uh, went through backcountry hunters and anglers and uh, just got out here last night and uh, started glassing this morning. Uh, I saw a couple good groups of bulls, but uh, we're going to keep looking for, for a good bull and uh, just enjoying the, the beauty of the country out here and getting to hang out with some good friends and enjoy it. The deer and elk primarily on the Zumwalt Prairie 
spend a lot of their, their spring and summer months up on the prairie itself. It's good forage, it's, it's pretty easy country for them to raise calves. Especially in this part of the state, it, the private lands are more in the winter range areas and they play a crucial role for the survival of elk and deer moving out of the mountains you know, and dropping into those lower lands. When an animal's crossing from public to private or private to public, that, that animal doesn't know that it's public or private land. They cross where they need to. What it comes down to, it comes down to habitat and habitat for, for wildlife. Big game move all over the map and they don't just stop at jurisdictional boundaries. We're up above the breaks of the Anahant River, uh, looking at probably close to 200 elk. Uh, some really good bulls. There's bulls here that I would you know, die to shoot any, any other uh, hunt, but uh, this one, it's, it's incredible. It, there's elk everywhere. Uh, so many elk that we actually can't get into shooting position right now on the biggest one. For as rugged as a greater Hell's Canyon landscape generally is, hiking and glassing off Long Ridge is actually a fairly uncomplicated affair. By mid-morning, after several hours of glassing and looking over 40 plus branch bulls, we'd located what I was after, a mature old six-point bull. Just hours into my three-day hunt, I now had to decide whether or not I was ready to end it so soon. It's uh, first morning, so we're just trying to decide if it's a first morning bull or uh, or not. But it's awfully tempting. So we do have a non-lead incentive program that we are partnering with ODFNW, the Oregon Zoo, and Oregon Hunters Association. We don't require the use of non-lead ammunition for the antlerless hunts, but but we do uh, encourage folks to to be educated. For me it was it was kind of a no-brainer after seeing the uh, the results of the, the demonstration and then talking with Leland Moore as I kind of prepared for this season. Uh, about different options for non-lead ammo. Uh, I started shooting some of it through my gun and, and actually got just as good, if not better, grouping through the gun uh, with the non-lead ammo as I did with lead ammo. My wife and I have a, a baby on the way that's due in April, our first kid, and uh, that, that definitely factors in. You know, at the end of the day, it's, it's one of those things for me that, uh, why risk it? The choice to use lead or non-lead you know, it comes down to each individual person, but, but we ask folks to make decisions based on what they feel is best for, for themselves and conservation. On the hunt on the Zumwalt, we set up trail cameras on the carcass after we took all the, the meat off of my cow elk. And as a hunter, I always know that scavengers come into a carcass and it's just things go on in nature, but we set up three trail cameras and the images we got after that were so, so impactful to me. And one of the continuous things I saw many people say to me was, this is just fascinating. I was watch a bear come up and she hung out on that car carcass for probably at least three days. And then we, three golden eagles were there, magpies, many, many coyotes. It was quite impactful for me to see. And in my head, no, like we purposely shot non-lead ammunition to help protect my family as well as the wildlife. You know, as a hunter, I'm, I'm out there to put meat on the table for my family, you know, and to hunt the species that I'm hunting. I'm not interested in trying to, you know, in 
inadvertently harming or killing other animals. hunting, even the best laid plans can and often do go awry. As it turned out, this was certainly the case as we snuck closer to where I thought we'd have a shot at the bull that I was after. As we worked our way down the back side of the ridge, the four bulls just over the other side had somehow winded us. Got a big bull down. Not how we would have drawn it up. We, uh, they winded us when we were trying to sneak around the back side of the ridge and came up over the top and spooked. Yeah, it was an exciting experience, but uh, definitely a little, a little uh, frazzled with adrenaline right now. Just really, really grateful for the opportunity to hunt here and take such an awesome animal. thing that I really realized is my hunting at a young age, a lot of my success happened on private land. Well, now that I have children, I realize that just as much as we need public land areas, we need these private land areas to keep hunters um, engaged and have the opportunities. They smelled you. Yeah. Yeah. As you guys went around that corner, one of them popped up. And you were starting to make your way around the corner, and they all popped up. On the plus side, he should be a little leaner after the rut. Well, he'll be leaner, but still be heavy. <laughs> <laughs> With the light quickly fading and temperatures dropping, everyone jumped in to help finish butchering the bull and begin the long, steep pack back up to the rim. Hunting is a way to help manage wildlife populations for the betterment of all wildlife, as well as grasslands and, you know, and plant life. Being able to control herd populations and, and influence distribution helps preserve the bunch grass, helps preserve native aspen stands. This particular hunt is a landowner tag. Every year we donate landowner tags to different community organizations or conservation-minded organizations, which then they raffle off the opportunity to, uh, to come experience the preserve. It's a great thing what uh, what TNC does with those tags to, to you know, give them to organizations that support conservation. I'm just glad to be able to play my part in it. Especially now with having a baby on the way, I'm kind of reflecting on that and really thinking about what it means to me to be able to to go out and to access you know both public lands as well as occasionally private and just just to see all the wildlife and the beautiful country and, and really wanting to preserve that, you know, for, for my kids, for future generations. It's incumbent upon us to break down those barriers and build partnerships with private landowners and public land managers in a way that benefits wildlife and wildlife habitat. 
it's great to see groups like TNC, Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, really reaching out to, to a broader group than just people that have traditionally been hunters. Even on this hunt, I had a tendency to want to reach for my camera almost as much or more than I wanted to reach for my rifle. I, I just love these animals. I love being able to watch them. It's just a part of who I am. You know, I, I live in the city now, and, and to me, being able to get out here is a necessary part of who I am. I need to be out in the mountains. I need to be out in the wild, really just to refresh and, and kind of keep my sanity.